Good morning, everybody. I hope you everyone's having a great day. I made a little trip over to Harbor Freight, picked up uh, what's called a six inch T bevel. And I'm going to break this down and make myself a measuring tool. And that measuring tool is going to be a little bit different from this T bevel. What it's going to allow me to do is uh, use it as a depth gauge. I can use it as a right angled uh, T square, a 45 degree angle, make compound angles. Um, also use it as a torpedo level to level pitchers and things like that. So basically what I did is I bought this six inch T bevel and uh, they cost about four dollars. I think it was three dollars and ninety nine cents and then I just cannibalized this thing and tore it all apart. Took apart the nut, the bolt, and the um, ruler. Then I snapped the plastic apart and then I popped out that little tiny leveling tube. So I got all the parts for four dollars for this thing. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something on my CNC, a, a little base for it. But the first thing I've got to do is I've got to um, set these parts up. So what i got to do is uh, draw a line on this thing. This ruler comes to a real sharp point because they use it as a compound angle uh, finder. And I don't need that sharp point because I want to use it as a depth gauge. So I want to square that off. So what I did is take just a mechanical pencil and I drew a line across it right at the one inch line which is the beginning of the ruler where I want to square it. The other side has centimeters and the problem is when you do this you have to start the centimeters at three which really isn't a problem for me because I don't use centimeters that often and then whenever I mark things I normally don't start right at the beginning anyway. I When I typically grab a tape rule I, I'll start at number one and measure over so if I wanted five inches I would measure between the one and six inch mark to get my five inches. Now you'd have to do that with the centimeters there because you can see it starts at just a little over three but the inch imperial inches will start right at number one. So what I did is I took this ruler over to my portable bandsaw. I, that's a Harbor Freight uh, bandsaw, you know, port band it was under $100, and then I just welded up a little square um, frame and mounted it to a table, and now I've got myself a table-mounted uh, hacksaw that I can do all my metal, and I don't have to intertwine the metal with the wood. So I marked that ruler off at the one-inch mark. I cut it on the metal bandsaw. Then I took it over to my grinder. And I've outfitted my grinder with a special wheel. That wheel over on the side there, that's a Scotch-Brite wheel. You can order those just about anywhere. Aircraft Spruce is where I get mine. But I think you can get them at Master Car also. It's just a, it's just a Scotch-Brite wheel, and it's great for deburring things. That ruler um, is very, very sharp and it's got real sharp burrs on it. So what I did is I just run it right across that scotch bright wheel and I deburred the ruler all the way around. And by deburring it all the way around, it makes it really smooth. And it's it's very quick actually. It just you just run it on there and and it just deburrs it. So that's really all that's needed to prepare your ruler. Ruler's already got a slot in it, so that was quite handy and now there's no chance of cutting your fingers so the next thing I needed to do was prepare my stock I ended up taking some Corian I went down to the local cabinet place and walked in and said hey I'm making some measuring tools and just wanted to know if you had any scrap cutoffs that I could have that you were gonna throw away and they gave me some scrap and I just cut it up to the size I wanted on the table saw 
And this stuff, this Corian is great because it cuts just like wood. You don't need to change your saw blade or anything. I just put it on the table saw and whacked off a piece that I needed. And um, I was good to go. So what's very nice about using Corian is it mills up fantastic. So, you know, when you get all done, you don't have any finishing to do or anything like that. You just give it a quick sand and uh, basically you're done. So I milled up my pieces and the very first thing I did was, if you can see, I've got my spoil board down, but what I did is I threw another piece of wood on top of the spoil board. That's that light colored wood underneath the blue Corian. And the very first thing I did is I faced off that. I threw in a inch and a half uh, surfacing bit and I ran a little pocket like three thousandths of an inch all the way across it just to make sure that my table was good and flat because when I lay my ruler and I want it to slide in between some grooves um, I want it to be very accurate so I didn't want to have any chance of it being high on one end and low on the other so I milled off the table first then I put the Corian down onto that new spoil board and I just drilled a couple of holes, put some screws in, and screwed it right down to the table. Then at that point, just I ran my file, and I started cutting out my measuring tools. And um, they're all exactly the same. I just used a bunch of different colors of Corian to make different types of tools that you know, look different when I was handing them out and giving them away. Um, ran pretty quick. Um, the whole process to cut one of them was uh, about three minutes. I think it was like three minutes and ten seconds. I just took my time and just cut it slow. This is actual speed of the CNC. Um, I could have increased it quite a bit, but I did not. Here in this uh actual photo I'm cutting two at a time. I found that after I had done that I found that it was easier for me anyway to just cut one. Um, the reason for that is I was using all different kinds of scraps and my material size was different all the time. If I had one large piece I could put like six or nine rulers um, all on that same file and then just cut them all at once. But I just found it really convenient just to cut one, run the file, run, cut one because it only took three minutes. And then um, move my gantry down, jog it down a little bit, and then just hit zero on the X and the Y again. Um, the Z height was still the same if I was on the same piece of Corian. And then just hit start and it would cut again. Here you'll see a close up of the pocketing path after the part is completely milled out. Next will be the profile cut. And the router goes around, cuts the part out, and I held it together on the uh, larger piece with uh, tabs. I found out quickly that I did not want to have my tabs on the end of the ruler because that's a critical area for measuring and you'll draw your pencil flying across that. And I wanted that to be square with the ruler itself so it'd be a T-square. So I changed my toolpath so that my tabs were on the sides. Um, and then I was able to just put them on the sander and mill it out pretty easily and make it real smooth. Okay, the next step in the process will be to actually cut the part out. So I just used my multi-tool, went along and cut the tabs out. Pretty quick process. 
You just have to be careful when you use the multi-tool that you don't actually cut into the part. Just cut the tab off and uh, then you'll be all set. Okay, now I'm off to the belt sander. Just want to take the rulers, sand off those tabs, make sure the whole thing is good and smooth and that's the end of that process. Okay, well now it's time to put everything together. So I'll grab all the parts. Um, first we got the little thumb uh, nut and the screw and then we have the ruler itself and we have the uh, level. The level uh, basically doesn't use any glue or anything like that. It just snaps right on in. So what we do is we just push it on in. It snaps, snaps right on in so it's flush. That way it, it won't fall out. The ruler just kind of like sits on the slide and then slides back and forth. Very nice. Okay, so it's a good fit. Everything fits in there nice and tight. And then um, we take this. The one thing that I didn't do, and I'll do it right now, is I didn't countersink the back area here. That makes this nut fit just a little bit smoother. So let me go ahead and do that. So what I do is I just run a little countersink in there. Might as well do the second one while I'm at it. This allows that nut to fall in there nice and smooth. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, and we'll go ahead and we'll get the get the ruler on there and put it in, and then put the nut on. And that's it. Basically, it's done. Let me do the second one. This one I did not break apart. I have to break this apart again to get the second one. And I just push the level out. I throw these pieces away. They're not being used. And I go ahead and I put this little level in there. I snap it in. There we go. And um, we'll go ahead and attach this ruler. There you go, they're all done. Into the sl slots. Make sure that they uh, slide really easy. Sometimes you've got to fuss with them. I learned that uh, I had one bit on there and I broke the bit and put a new bit, put a new uh, tool in, and it was just off so slightly. But that's easy to adjust. I just used the Scotch Brite wheel and I ran the Scotch Brite wheel along the ruler a little bit and then they slid real easy again. So I'll put this one on in the um, in the 45 degree slot. Basically, slide the thumb in there. You got to hold your finger on the little round because there's not a there's not a locking mechanism for it. I just drilled a hole and then threw the sew screw on there. It's all done. Tightens together, so you loose it up and make that any way you want. You can also use it uh, as a. Let me put this. Finish putting this one together. You can also use it as a copying angle finder too, besides a depth finder. So you can use it as a depth finder, which is great for the depth of your saw. I use it a lot just for marking things. I'll, I'll go like three quarters of an inch or half that distance and put it up there and put a pencil and just run it along the run it along to find the distance. So that's really kind of nice. So you can you can put it right up here and you can find half the distance, lock it in, and then just use a pencil to come along here and then you can go 
the other side and mark it again, and then you'll know what, what half the distance is. Um, so let me tell you what the uses are. Um, pretty obvious. One is a depth finder. You can take the ruler off and just use the ruler. You can run it all the way here. You get two and a half inches here. You flip it around the opposite direction, you get a longer throw. And this distance I end up getting, I think, pretty close to five inches. I got three inches in that direction, and if I flip it around and put it on put it on this outside hole, that's where you get the long distance from. So let me do that and see what we get. There, I flipped it around here. And I can get five and a half inches. Of course, the length of the tool itself is seven inches. So basically that's that's how I come across with that. Um, so you can use it that way. You can uh, lift it up and use it as an angle finder too. A copying angle finder, you can get any angle you want. Put it on there and copy it. Put it on. Um, the other thing that you can do with it is use it as just a, a level. You know, you can just use it as a torpedo level and put it on there, level up pictures or whatever you want. So it's got straight edge, 90 degree, ruler, copying ruler. It's also got um, a 90 degree on, on this corner here. So you can take it and move it like this and then you've got 90 degrees there and it's it's pretty darn close it's i'd say it's dead on you know to uh for your 90 and your 45. so anyways these are what i made and uh, i hope they found it useful um, i use this tool all the time and i find it very handy so i thought you might enjoy the how I made the process.